Hello, my friends. On August 15, 2021, the Taliban re regained control over the government in Afghanistan after being out of power for 20 years. And it happened suddenly and more quickly than many people in government and political experts expected. So today is August 17, two days later, and the, the shock of this uh, takeover of the government and that the Taliban is in, you know, re essentially really in full control of the government again, and the former leader has left the country, etc. Um, and the big question is, how brutal will the Taliban be? This, you know, as, as a as the government ruling over the people, how brutal will it be? How barbaric will it be? The Taliban is barbaric. They. Their attitudes, uh, in particular towards women, is, you know, it's unacceptable. It's, it's, it's insane. So they don't allow them to be educated and, uh, you know, they have no freedoms. They can't leave their house uh, unless accompanied by a male. It's, it's just, it's, it's, it's crazy. And, and the result of this craziness is a lot of pain. Um, it's, it's madness. So... Is the Taliban going to be a little bit better this time? Are they have they woken up a little bit over the past twenty years, or is it going to be the the same old crazy thing? This is one of the questions. Um, it appears that they are going to be in control of the country for the near foreseeable future. Um, so, what what is it going to be like? Well, I want to know. I'm curious. You know, I'm hoping for the best, but I'm not, you know, extremely optimistic. So I want to know, how will I find out? Well, I look at a chart for August 15, the day that this transition happened. The Taliban had been taking over one city after another. And then on the 15th, they took over Kabul, the capital, the largest city, and they entered the presidential palace. And I saw a video on YouTube of... Taliban leaders in the presidential palace, and it had a time stamp of 6.05 p.m. Greenwich Mean Time. That would be 10.35 p.m. Uh, in Afghanistan. So as of 10.35 p.m. in Afghanistan, they were in the presidential palace, and the former leader was gone. Okay, probably happened before that, I guess, uh, you know, during the day, maybe a few hours earlier, they had taken full control of the presidential palace. In any case, it was August 15 was the big day. Almost no resistance. They just took over. Now, I want to know what's going on. I look at the chart for August 15. I did it for 1 p.m. Uh, when, when the activity has started up and they're engaged in taking over the city and the, the presidential palace and therefore the entire country. Now, What's going on? First thing I want to look at is the seven vibration, because seven vibration is involved whenever Islamic terrorists are doing things. Also, other kinds of terrorism. We see the seven vibration with Adolf Hitler and the Nazis in World War II. Seven vibration is also involved. Why seven vibration? Seven vibration is also involved with athletes. It's also involved with mysticism. What do mysticism, athletes, and Islamic terrorism and some other forms of terrorism, what do they have to do with each other? What it is is the seven vibration goes deep. It goes very quiet. It's very conservative. It's not very expressive. It's not very loose and wild. It's quiet. It's introverted. And... It goes deep. It often goes back into the deep history and heritage of things, the source of things, and it has great discipline and focus. Well, you think about athletes, discipline, focus, while everybody else is running around having parties, whatever, focus, training, control. Um, and, and what happens with reactionary groups, groups that do not like the wild, frenzied, modern pace and fight against it, want to bring everything back to some ancient deep heritage, seven vibration. So from observation, that's, that's what goes on. For example, if you look at the 
September 11, 2001, when there was an attack on the Twin Towers in New York City in the United States. And if we look here, here's the chart. Um, at 8 hours, 46 minutes, 30 seconds is the time one of the planes crashed into the Twin Towers, according to the research that was, you know, reported. Um, here's the seven vibration chart for that exact moment. And you see that Sun, Mars, and Uranus are within nine degrees. They're within nine degrees. They're in seven vibration. There they are. Mars, Uranus, the violence, the um, sudden explosion of energy in seven vibration. A planned, secretive... Um, you also get with seven vibration sometimes conspiracy theories people harboring things internally for a long time and exploding out and the Mercury's opposition Mars at the exact moment that the plane crashes into the tower, it's right on the ascendant descendant axis. So this is typical. We also have some trines and six styles coming off this. It's just the usual thing that happens in these kind of events. So I'm wondering, is the takeover on August 15th by the Taliban, is it the same kind of energy? If it is, we know what we are dealing with the same old um, kind of terrorism and, and um, extreme control and, and expression of violence that they plan out and they execute whenever they want to. So is it, we look at the seven vibration chart, I've got it up here, I just called it Aug 15, and here's the seven vibration chart. I was, I was so curious to see because I don't know, and I look at it, this is for 1 p.m., and we will time adjust it for earlier and later in the day, and what do we see? We see a Jupiter-Uranus opposition with Mars making a T-square, there's the Mars-Uranus square. The, the, you might say, classic or most prominent conspicuous thing that happens doesn't happen in every single Islamic terrorist event, um, but it's very, very common. Mars, Uranus, and there they are square. Now I want to see, did that happen just at 1 p.m.? Did it last several days? How did this build up? So I go to the time adjust, interactive chart adjust, and let's set this. I set it to four hours. So that, I'll go four hours earlier, that takes us to 9 a.m. This is 9 a.m. in Afghanistan. So 9 o'clock in the morning, fairly early in the day, the Mars square Uranus is there, the T square is still there. If I go even earlier to 5 a.m. before sunrise, um, Mars is back at 11 Taurus. It's within two degrees square to Uranus and out of orb to Jupiter. So by the early morning hours, Mars was moving into the square to Uranus. If I go all the way back to 1 o'clock in the morning, it now has a 3 degree orb. So by the evening before, Mars got within a 4 degree orb of the square. That's the allowable orb, is 4 degrees. It was also square to Neptune. So you had Mars, Uranus, Neptune the evening before. Oh, that's a classic... Um, madness kind of thing where people brew up all their conspiracy theories and wild ideas. You had a Mars, Uranus, Neptune, Pluto the evening before. So they were all charged up about this and, you know, in some kind of reverie um, filled with mad ideas the evening before. And then as we head into, into the day, now it doesn't have to be negative, Mars, Uranus, Neptune, Pluto, let me go back to 1 a.m. in the morning. See that Mars connecting to Pluto. Pluto connecting to Neptune. Neptune to Mars is a Mars, Neptune, Pluto. Mars is also within orbit of Uranus. So the Mars, Uranus, Neptune, Pluto, if I go back to the evening before, it's going to become even clearer. Where did it go? Here's Uranus. Here's the Mars. And there it is. And a whole other thing has happened um, but that's with the moon very, very quickly. But what I want to look at, look at is August 15. So as we head into the morning, 
Here we are at 5 o'clock in the morning. The Mars-Jupiter Uranus starts to get with an orb. Mars-Jupiter just barely beginning at 5 in the morning. By 9 in the morning, we start to see the clear shape of the Mars-Jupiter Uranus. By There's the 1 o'clock in the afternoon, the T-square. By 5 in the evening, look at the Mars-Jupiter Uranus. It's picked up the moon for just a few hours or so, making it look really big, but it's mostly just, that's going to go by pretty quickly, but there's the Mars-Jupiter Uranus at 5 p.m. And look how strong it is at 9 p.m., the Mars-Jupiter Uranus. So Mars reaches exact square to Uranus. And then now is separating by a degree and a half by 1 a.m. the next morning. So around 9 p.m., this is around the time that they start entering the presidential palace, and, you know, they're there, the former leader is gone. The Mars square Uranus has now just passed being exact, right in the evening. And look at the Mars Jupiter Uranus. It's all within 13 and a half to four, it's all to 14 and a half, it's all within one degree. It becomes exact. That day, August 15, Sunday, August 15, was the perfect day for a Taliban takeover. Because Jupiter Uranus means enthusiasm, optimism, positive. The Mars comes in with the explosion, the power, the presence. People just fled. It, apparently they had very little will and motivation to resist them. And there they are, easily taking over with the Mars-Jupiter Uranus. So my conclusion is, this is the same old Taliban, same old Mars-Uranus seven vibration Taliban, <clears throat> excuse me, Taliban with the Jupiter Uranus, and they are happy, they are enthusiastic, they're feeling good, um, and, and they are going to implement their idea of religious law with all of its restrictions. So there's my answer. Bad news for the rest of the world, good news for them. Now, is there any good news in this? Um, well, first of all, it's Mars Jupiter Uranus. Be worse if it was Mars Saturn Uranus. Oh my God, it was Mars Saturn Uranus. It means we would be dealing with a bunch of people who are angry, hostile, explosive, you know, just, they're just like um, totally unpredictable. There would be extreme tension because seven vibrations controlled. It's like they would be very quiet and austere and, and then just, you know, who knows, commit all kinds of outrageous atrocities, just brutal. It's Mars Jupiter Uranus. So it's a little more upbeat, so it could be worse, but it is, it is the same old story, but maybe a little more upbeat, maybe a little less brutal than they've, than they've always been, but they're going to clamp down and control the country. And if you interfere with them, here comes Mars Uranus. So now is there any good news? Well, I looked at the natal chart. And we always look at the direct midpoint structures. Let me blow this, you know, magnify this a little bit. Okay. And I noticed, where is it? There was a midpoint structure. Um, let's see. Here it is. Mars is at Sun-Venus midpoint, 29 minutes, and the Jupiter-Neptune minute, Jupiter-Neptune midpoint, 12 minutes. This is what we call a midpoint isotrap. And if we pull up a pop-up wheel, just so you can visualize it, what's going on is that Mars, over here at 10 Virgo, is at the midpoint of Sun and Venus. So there's the Sun 18 degrees before Mars, Venus 18 degrees after Mars. So there's Mars right in between Sun and Venus. And Mars is also in between Jupiter and Neptune, way over here. Okay, and so Mars is at the Sun, Venus midpoint, and Jupiter, Neptune midpoint, when, and very, very tight at 1 p.m. I can do the time adjust and see 
if this lasts throughout the day, let's go four hours earlier to see if it was there in the morning. Yes, it is. 24 minutes and five minutes. So it was there at nine o'clock in the morning. Go back to 1 p.m. Uh, and there it is with yours. We mentioned 29 minutes and 12 minutes. And we go up to 5 p.m. Still there. Half a degree and 20, almost 20 minutes. And by 9 p.m., it's still at half a degree and starting to now move out of orb. So by the next day, they will move out of orb. So it's a slow moving pattern. If I go all the way to 1 p.m. the next day, they're up around a degree. So by the next evening, they'll reach a degree and a half. They'll be out of orb. Once they both reach about a one degree orb, it's now not so powerful and exciting. So that's interesting that right at the time on August 15th that this is happening, Mars is making those two midpoint structures. So there are two things going on on August 15th. One, the uh, Mars, Jupiter, Uranus, T square in the seventh vibration that I showed you, and this midpoint isotrap. Now we go to listings, harmonic patterns, listings, number eight, and we can look at what vibration the Mars at Sun, Venus are in, and the Mars at Jupiter, Neptune, and we'll find that Mars at Sun, Venus is in 20 vibration, not extremely strong, 12 degrees, but it's there, and the Mars at Jupiter, Neptune is in 15 vibration, 10 degree orb. So it's in a five times three and five times four, means I want to look at the five vibration chart, and in the five vibration chart, I see that Mars is making a T-square um, with Sun and Venus. There, That's 20 vibration, five times four. And in the natal chart, Mars is conjunct to Sun-Venus. And there's the grand trine. So this T-square and this grand trine are very powerful on August 15th. And if I go to the time adjust and I go four hours earlier, we already saw that the midpoint structure is with an orb. And there's the T-square, Mars at Sun-Venus and the grand trine. They are very solid in the morning. And let's go forward to... Where am I here? To 5 p.m. The T-square is now still there, a little bit weak. The Grand Trine is still there. And by 9 p.m., the Grand Trine starts getting weaker. You see the Mars to Jupiter is thin, but the rest of it's there. And the Mars, Sun, Venus, T-square is still there. It's still there by 1 a.m. in the morning. The Grand Trine still getting a little weaker, and the T-square has now be gone a little bit out of orb. The Venus-Mars is now out of orb. So that whole configuration, that midpoint isotrap, having a five vibration quality to it, is in orb that day, and by the next day, it's weak to gone. Two major things. The seven vibration, uh, Mars, Jupiter, Uranus, and this five vibration, you know, it's a five base, five times three and five times four, midpoint isotrap in the natal chart. What does it mean? Well, Mars, Sun, Venus in five times four, that is flowing art. Whoa, flowing art, creative arts. It's like vivid painting um, and Venus, Mars making actually making beautiful, it's creative, it's playful, it's childlike. And Mars, Jupiter, Neptune in five vibration is more like an intercultural art. Uh, well, the art only because of the Sun, Venus, Mars. Mars, Jupiter, Neptune in five vibration is open. It's, it's unprejudiced. It's curious. It enjoys the fun. It enjoys like an international competitions, international, uh, you know, Mars, Jupiter, Neptune is big, five vibrations. It's having fun, not getting stuck. Whoa, what? That does not sound like what we're looking at. So what I predict is this. I predict that what's going to happen in Afghanistan is it's not going to be one story. It's going to be the same old Taliban controlling people's lives whatever, 
But there's going to be some people um, bringing a lighter tone into it. So a lighter, more creative tone. So it's not, it's not as singular, harsh, rigid system. Because whatever's going on at the time, you can look at the founding chart of the United States, you look at these charts of the founding times, whatever's going on works its way into the life, the qualities during that day. And it's not even a matter of so much an exact moment, it's the quality of the experiences that were going on. So it will be complicated, there will be doing, there will be uh, a lot of different things going on. And at times, they will be harsh and brutal, and there will be signs of opening up and possibly building upon some of the ancient arts, the music and all of that actually coming out a little bit and developing. That's what I'm expecting to see. So you're going to have different opinions like five years from now. Some people will say, oh, we never should have left the United States never should have left Afghanistan. Other people are saying, oh, it's a good thing because there will be the brutality, there will be the control, but there will also be some loosening up and maybe a little more color. Maybe I think people might smile, smile a little bit more and take a greater interest. So it's not going to happen right away, but over time that will happen. Another thing that we can do when we go to the natal chart, we go to this listings number one, uh, harmonic patterns listing number one and real quickly to get an idea of some of the strong vibrations going on and we see a lot of 29 and I looked at the 29 vibration chart and if you time adjust it some of these things are moving in and out but the Jupiter Saturn Neptune Mars will move in and out but Jupiter Saturn Neptune will be there through the day and uh, Saturn opposition Jupiter Neptune in in uh, 29 vibration with other planets coming in and out, Venus earlier in the day, etc. So um, what we're going to see here is that Afghanistan will evolve. It will, it, it's, you're going to have intellectuals, um, theologians writing about Islam and, and culture and politics and introducing ideas that Islam needs to evolve and not be stuck where it was. So there will be very gradually and slowly coming in this idea that things need to evolve and develop and not just get stuck. Uh, Jupiter, Saturn, Neptune has to do with theology, religion, and how we organize our ideals, what our visions and dreams are. It's in 29 of the sense of evolution. So there will be that. What I predict based on all this is that 20 years from now, it'll take a long time, but by 2041, 20 years from now, um, Afghanistan will have made a lot of progress. It will make a lot of progress because the five vibration is there, the 29 vibration is there, and it will start to, you know, it will, it will be noticeably different. It's going to be a slow process. It's going to be complicated. And, and it's going to be ugly because the Taliban is ugly and that Mars, Jupiter, Uranus is there and it's ugly. Um, but it will get uh, gradually better. We're seeing a complex number of things. Also, I looked at some other vibrations. In 11 vibration, there's not a strong configuration, but there is a Sun-Uranus conjunction. And it's there exactly on the day. So if you start at 9 in the morning... The sun is four degrees before Uranus, and by five in the afternoon, the sun is now within one degree of Uranus, and by 9 p.m., it is now past Uranus. So during the day, the sun was applying to Uranus and then starts leaving it by the evening, so it's right in there. And sun Uranus in 11 vibration is very wild and free and rebellious. It's not a configuration. It's just two planets. It doesn't form any stable, strong midpoint structures or anything. It's just Sun and Uranus. Um, I mean, stable meaning la lasting throughout the day and culminating in the evening when the takeover happens. 
So there will be some dissidents. There will be some people, you know, listening to rock and roll and things like that um, and adopting um, Western ways. The Taliban's not going to be able to completely lock out the, um, you know, the Internet and, and that spirit of freedom. It's, it's going to linger around. And sometimes they will be brutal in handling it. And sometimes they'll, they'll just turn an eye away from it. But it will be there. It won't gather momentum and become a strong movement because there's no planetary configuration. So, you know, there isn't three planets, just two planets. So it's just something you see periodically. So that's what I expect. It's not a, a black and white situation, except it is clear that this is the Taliban. There will be some um, lightness that goes on, we can call it. Um, it won't be as harsh and severe as consistently. And over a long period of time, because 29 vibration takes a long time to develop, it's, it's more abstract and you might say intellectual. But over time, uh, Afghanistan will evolve. Now, I'm making these predictions as if they're fact, as if there's some kind of fate. It depends on what we do. The astrology is really just resources. They're just materials. If, if we, the global community, we don't take advantage of this light feeling of art, there's opportunities to build cultural programs, believe it or not. Um, you know, where people could go into Afghanistan and, and have, you know, some kind of theater or music and vice versa, and they would tolerate a little bit of this. So if we build on that, you know, if the global community builds on that and gives attention to it and finds whatever artistic, there'd be some artistic genius. Artistic geniuses are born, you know, randomly. <laughs> Whatever and wherever they want to be born, there will be some being born in Afghanistan or growing up there. And, you know, if it's highlighted, if it's brought out, um, you know, it's up to us. It's always up to us. It's always up to us to what we do. You know, if we turn a blind eye to that collectively and that Mars Uranus square and the seven vibration takes over, you'll see the opportunities appear and they're just not taken advantage of. So... You know, there's there's no black and white about this. And um, a last thing I want to say is, I I as you know, if you've listened to my other political things, I'm hesitant to talk about politics because people just get all wound up about who they love and who they hate. And I'm trying to just focus on the astrology of it without blaming or obsessing over per particular political people. And these things are you might say, politically agnostic. This is just what's going on. Um, so there it is. I was curious. And so, you know, I'm slightly disheartened in some ways and slightly uh, encouraged in other ways. Disheartened by the strong seven vibration, but the 29, the five vibration, a little bit of 11 vibration rebelliousness there, um, you know, it it's showing some promise in the long run, but I don't want to, you know, have rose-colored glasses here. This is awful. This is horrendous, um, you know, that the world is still this way uh, in the 21st century. It's it's unbelievable. Um, you know, we have our own battles in our country and other countries to, you know, to give full respect and honor and appreciation. We have tons of problems here. Um you know, around the world, and this level of barbaric a attitude is is really insane. Anyway, um, just want to finish by by acknowledging that and not um, you know treating this without the um, attention that it that it deserves and the concern that we all have for the people that suffer as a consequence of greed and and stupidity um whatever else uh, makes these things happen okay my friends thank you very much for listening god bless namaste